All right, in addition to having a divergent plate boundary on a continent, you can have one under the oceans, and this is a mid-ocean ridge. This is a mountain range that's in all of the ocean basins, and basically uh, as the plates move away from each other, new ocean crust forms there. And uh, you have volcanoes and you have earthquakes occurring there. It's just you don't really hear much about it because it's several kilometers beneath sea level, so it doesn't really affect people. Uh, but you do have that active plate boundary down there in all the ocean basins. So what can uh, end up happening is uh, we have a continent here, and notice those purple arrows are telling you things are moving away from each other. And as the plate pulls apart, we get this rift valley forming, like the East African Rift. If this continues, eventually you're going to get this narrow sea, kind of like the Red Sea. And if that continues even more, eventually a large ocean basin with a mid-ocean ridge is going to develop, kind of like the Atlantic Ocean. And so you can actually have a continent split apart and over time a vast ocean develop in between those old parts of the continent that were stuck together. And that's a divergent boundary where plates are moving away from each other. You can expect volcanoes and earthquakes at those locations. Now we also have what's called a convergent plate boundary. Well, if on Earth there are some places where plates are moving away from each other, there's got to be other places where plates move towards each other, right? And that's a convergent boundary. Plates are moving towards each other. You can have an ocean plate. Remember we talked about the crust and it's either basalt or granite? Well, ocean crust is made from a rock called basalt. Continental crust is made from a rock called granite. Basalt is much denser than granite. So what happens is you get something called subduction occurring. That denser basalt will sink into that squishy asthenosphere underneath the continental plate. So this process of an ocean plate sinking into the asthenosphere is called subduction. And what happens then, you start getting melting occurring because as that subducted plate goes deeper into the asthenosphere, it gets hotter and hotter. Eventually we start having melting occurring. And if we have melting occurring, that's making magma that will create volcanoes. And any time you have plates pushing against each other or interacting with each other, you can have earthquakes. So in a place where we have an ocean plate meeting a continental plate, a good example is up in the Pacific Northwest of the United States states up in Washington and Oregon. The whole reason we have those volcanoes there like Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens and uh, what else is there? Mount Hood. Uh, the whole reason we have those is because we have that subducting ocean plate there. And just uh, a little diagram to show you what's going on. Here's our continental plate. There's that ocean plate sinking underneath it, the melting occurring, creating those volcanic mountains. Now you can also have a place where two ocean plates meet. And in this case, subduction occurs as well. And, well, which plate subducts? It's going to be the denser one, which is usually the older and kind of colder, denser plate. So you have an ocean plate, another ocean plate, and one is going to sink underneath the other. And same thing's going to happen. We're going to get volcanoes, we're going to get earthquakes. A good example of where this is happening would be Japan or the Aleutian Islands in uh, Alaska. So again, ocean plate, another ocean plate, we have this one sinking and melting and creating those volcanic islands. You can also have a place where two continental plates hit each other. In this case, you don't get any subduction. Because remember, I said that has to do with density. And continental crust is not dense enough to subduct. It's kind of like a cork floating in water. You can try to push it down, but it's going to pop back up. Um, so no subduction happens, 
but all that material that would be going down, where is it going to go? It's going to get squished upwards and build really big mountains. So the crust is going to get really, really thick as these things crumple against each other and push these mountains upwards. You're not going to get any volcanoes in this case because you're not really sending anything deep enough to melt, but you are going to have a lot of earthquakes. And a place that's like this today is the Himalayan mountains. What happened to create the Himalayas is what we're looking at right here. We had India, and then here we have Asia. And there's this plate that was subducting, but it's kind of carrying India with it. And eventually India slammed into Asia, and now that continental crust can't subduct, so we build up those big um, Himalayan mountains there. All right, last of our plate boundaries, we get um, a transform plate boundary. In this case, the plates are simply sliding alongside each other. They're not pushing against each other, and they're not pulling apart, they're just kind of sliding alongside. And uh, there's no subduction, which means we're not going to get any melting to create big, massive volcanoes, but we do get a lot of earthquakes. A great example of this is actually the San Andreas Fault. So what we're looking at here, in blue we have the Pacific Plate, in green we have the North American Plate. And you can see the Pacific Plate is going up that way, and the North American Plate is kind of sliding down this way. And so if you're like, is California going to fall off into the ocean someday? The answer is no. What's really going to happen is this part is going to slide this way, whereas the other side, the North American slide, side, is going to slide down that way. Notice Los Angeles and San Diego are on the Pacific Plate. San Francisco kind of sits right on top of uh, the fault, but much of it's on the North American Plate. So what's eventually going to happen is Los Angeles is going to head that way, San Francisco is going to head this way, and they're going to meet someday. And if you think traffic in those cities is bad today, just wait until you're driving through Los San Angelisco. I don't know if any of you guys have ever driven there. It's a nightmare. All right, so anyway, not falling off into the ocean, simply sliding alongside each other. So here we have the entire planet and um, the major plates on the planet. And uh, you can see some of them are almost entirely made of ocean crust. Some are a combination of continental and ocean crust. Some are almost entirely continental. They're all moving against each other. And remember, most of our earthquakes happen along these plate boundaries. So when we have our next lecture, which is on earthquakes, we're going to be seeing that most of the earthquakes are going to be along these areas. Now, there are some exceptions to that. In addition, after we talk about earthquakes, we're going to be talking about volcanoes. And many volcanoes also happen along plate boundaries. That's why we have volcanoes up here in the Pacific Northwest. There are some exceptions to that, though. Right? Out here, that's Hawaii. Now, Hawaii is in the middle of the Pacific Plate. And we're going to find out in lecture on volcanoes why it's in the middle of the Pacific Plate. But in any case, there's our main plates that we have on our planet. Now, if you've taken me for any other classes, um, you know I like to finish my lectures with what I call the random picture of the day, which is exactly what that sounds like. I give you a really random picture that has nothing to do with uh, pretty much anything else, uh, but I just want to show it to you and talk about it. Um, I do a lot of geoarchaeology these days, so many of my, my pictures are going to have some archaeology behind them. Uh, like this one. This is in a town called Zanten in uh, Germany, and this was an old Roman colony. And uh, this was their amphitheater at that old Roman colony. And at one time, this was a large city, something like uh, 15 to 20,000 people lived there. You can visit it today and see their old bathhouse, uh, their bathhouse, some temples, some houses that the Romans lived in. And you even get to climb around 
on their amphitheater if they're not having uh, shows there. They do like concerts and in summer they have like gladiator battles without the killing. Um, but if they're not doing anything, you can climb around in there, you can walk into the middle of it, and you can be like, are you not entertained? And do fun stuff like that and you know, it's, it's a great place to visit. So if you ever get the chance, visit Sanden in Germany.